Look, I'm in the forest. Woo! I mean, I am in the forest because I have, I have my rock here. You see? <clears throat> I just need some greenery. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about AlphaGo. Quinn, check out Quinn's video. Uh, he, he he goes through an article uh, more extensively than I'm gonna do with my limited human memory. <laughs> I'll, I'll hit the main points though. So I'm a chess guy. I, I understand the, the computational aspects and the strategy, tactics, um, positional aspects of these types of games. In terms of chess, I understand it pretty well for a human. Um, and I, what the grandmasters do, I understand as well with study. It doesn't come immediately upon seeing like a, a brilliant, you know, 12, P, 12 move mating combination or something like that. Those don't immediately come to my mind, but if I'm studying uh, the deeper theory and ideas underlying what actually happened on the board, then I can understand it eventually. Now, AlphaGo, or rather the game is just called Go, uh, I've never looked into it. I only heard of the game when I heard that a computer finally beat a human, and then I became interested in it, but I never, uh, still have not, I still don't even know if I'm interested in looking into what it is, because chess already takes up enough brain power, and, and I want to have some brain power left to fuck around and uh, fart around and whatnot. So, um, anyway, sorry, my beard is bugging me. Uh, Go is more complicated than chess, from what I understand, and it's it's a game where you're placing rocks on a, a board with many more options than chess, which has uh, 64 squares. It's eight by eight. That's not 64 squares, is it? Yeah, it is. 8 times 8 is 64. Um, so Go is, is, is much more complicated, and the tree of potential or tree of possibilities that Go has is much larger than chess, as far as I understand. I could be wrong on that. And the uh, theoretical understanding of the game Go from just me taking a couple seconds to think about it, if the tree of possibilities is higher, then people are going to rely more on theory and psychology than calculating out a thousand moves into the future because our brains can't do that anyway, and the, the best chess players don't do that. They rely on pattern recognition and psychology. Uh, memory is good, but it's not necessary to... Uh, be good at chess. There is a way to have natural ability where you're in, intuiting moves. Um, but this game Go. So Google has a, a branch called Deep Mind, that's developing artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, that one aspect of it has been programmed to learn the game Go, and it's it was called AlphaGo. And AlphaGo was the first, I don't know if it was the first program designed to play Go, probably not, but it was the first program to beat, essentially, a, a grandmaster in that game. And uh, that program was called AlphaGo. Recently, oh, AlphaGo was programmed, their AlphaGo's uh, algorithms were programmed using human intuition and knowledge and human databases as the training grounds for AlphaGo. So it, it was given a sequence of sequence of moves, explained in, in terms that the machine can understand the logic behind them, and then it used those, those moves as a basis or platform for its learning. So it played, you know, it played somewhat like a human because that's how it started learning. Now, and this this AlphaGo was able to beat the, the world's strongest 
human Go player. Now AlphaGo Zero, which is AlphaGo's predecessor, uh, was not fed any human data at all. It, according to the the DeepMind programmers, this iteration of AlphaGo or AlphaGo Zero uh, learned from scratch, and it learned by playing games against itself. So no human input whatsoever, aside from perhaps managing uh, or overseeing. It's self-learning. So it this machine played... <laughs> some of these things are kind of outstanding to hear, but... Uh, so this machine played millions of games against itself in like 30 days or less. I don't remember. A few days. Millions of games against itself. And... Once it became, <laughs> once it became a master against itself or whatever, I don't know what the rating would be because it's off all of the charts. But once it, once the people decided that it, it had learned learned enough to play some competition, they set it against the earlier version of itself, which was AlphaGo. So Alpha Zero, AlphaGo Zero was pit against AlphaGo. AlphaGo is the one that beat the world's strongest master. And after AlphaGo Zero was pit against AlphaGo. Uh, AlphaGo Zero beat AlphaGo 100 to 0. <laughs> 100 to 0. So in chess terms, to, to make this slightly more relatable, in chess terms, uh, the first... Uh, very famous time where you know a grandmaster was a top grandmaster the top grandmaster in his prime uh gary kasparov or kasparov he played this machine called deep blue and this was i think in the 90s i think it was in the late 90s pretty sure and the computer beat him and it was the first time it was like a, a moment it was a you know moment in history and it made some sort of a move that nobody could understand how the computer could do that move because it seemed so human and anti uh, computer logic is what it seemed like but now um, <clears throat> these computers for, that play chess are rated at 3300 and the top human player grandmaster Magnus Carlsen is rated like 28 30 28 40 um which is a massive difference. It comp not a, grand, grandmasters today, in order to beat chess, the top chess computers, I think it's Komodo as the top chess computer. In order for grandmasters, they don't beat them, but in order for them to draw or have an even split, they have to be given something like a, a three, three to five point uh, piece odds or handicap or some sort of handicap that gives a, a, a three to five point advantage to the human and then only some humans are still able to draw that position i don't know perhaps if you have one i doubt it um there was a recent game yakov uh, norowitz played komodo with those types of odds and i think he drew all three games um but the computers are ridiculously strong in chess now to take that analogy to what uh, Go is doing, or what? Sorry, what Alpha? What Alpha Go is doing? It would be like that computer that's thirty three hundred, and which taught itself basically by learning from the humans. If another iteration of that chess computer were to be done the same exact situation as Alpha Go did, and they probably could do this, and they probably will do this, uh, have that the same type of programming that Alpha Go Zero used, and have the have the have Komodo play a million games against itself. Uh, you know, in a few days, and then have it play Komodo Zero, whatever. Have Komodo Zero play Komodo and see if it beats Komodo 100 to 0. That would be the same sort of leap. So you already have like a superhuman, beyond all Grandmaster level strength computer that just gets treated like a baby, like a complete patser, as chess people call them, a noob. 
So this one that's 500 points above the top grandmaster would be treated by a noob by the computer that taught itself without any human input. And I'm assuming this this is maybe not quantum level computing, but probably near that. Some D-Wave computer type computing. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway. Uh, it's interesting. <laughs> Perhaps scary. I don't know. I remember when I was... I have like glimpses into, I don't know if you call it the future, but like when I was, when I would smoke weed, uh, it was very bad for me, but it also kind of gave me glimpses into things, into possibilities. And in one particular thought ramble, uh, I, I went down the path of what happens if I learn enough, as much about chess as literally can be learned like if I was l like the chess god and I, I knew the entire game every single possibility that could happen in that game what would that feel like and I went into that that feeling uh, and like mentally experienced what it would feel like to play essentially the game of chess as a god and it wasn't pleasant I, I it wasn't, uh, <clears throat> the main thing I took from that thought experiment was that once you learn the game completely, like as in, uh, tic-tac-toe, that's a simple version of it. Once you learn the game completely, it's not a game anymore and it's boring and you're, you're, you're done with it. That's, that's why we like playing games because of the unpredictability part of them because of the challenge and if you know everything there's no challenge so I, I did like mentally go into I, I saw what it felt like I experienced what it would feel like to know every single possible way that the game could be played and beat and I didn't like it uh, and that's kind of the same thing you could even apply that to reality itself because it, it, there's a lot of computing going on here and that's what everybody does day to day is they're they're taking risks and bets with their own lives as far as what they're doing uh, careers uh, who they decide to trust who they decide to get into relationships with all this stuff this is still computing on a certain level and this this idea of going into god mind regarding anything uh that's what led me to come up with this idea that once you know everything, then everything, then you're dead, essentially. If you know everything that can happen, then you're dead because every single thing is literally an iteration of the whole body of knowledge that you have acquired, and therefore it's all continuous deja vu, and there's no creativity or innovation or anything like that. And so it's essentially dead. It's a dead repetition. Which is why I like to talk about uh, doing something different all the time. And never, never repeat yourself. Never pick your beard in the same way, you know. <laughs> uh, there's, there's countless ways to keep innovation going. But, but that's only if your mind has been wiped. There is a portion of you that knows everything. There, there is that, that God mind hiding somewhere. You don't ever want to go there. <laughs> you can go there, but, you know, it won't necessarily be fun. Because we don't want to know everything. We like surprises. We like uh, mistakes. All this stuff. We like, As humans, we like that. So, not sure if I had any, <laughs> any overarching... Uh, moral to this story it's just interesting to me because I like chess and I've always been fascinated by watching computers dismantle humans in chess and myself <laughs> I, I play against the computers sometimes there were some earlier computers that I could beat you know the computer was maybe around a 21-2200 level but if I ever play 
uh, you know, the stockfishes or the Komodos, and I just get thrashed and trashed, and it's not as fun. But it's interesting to see how they think, because they don't think, they, I don't know what they do, but they do something different than humans do. But Quinn is, he's more making a parallel with the AI invasion into just the human world in general and how <laughs> if the AI ever went rogue and decided to be malicious or the bad humans decided that that was going to be their you know their tool to further enslave people then the human mind would have just as there's no it would have no chance in that type of thinking. Maybe the human mind is is better, so to speak, in other ways, and I'm sure it is. Uh, but God himself or source would have to come sort of sort things out because these computers are beyond any our wildest imaginations. Even the uh, in the article, there's plenty of articles to look up. I'll, I'll probably put a, a link to one of them in the in the description box, but in the article, the top Go players were saying they have no clue what the fuck the engine's doing. They don't understand any of the moves because normally humans, they tell a story to themselves about what's going on on the board and then that helps them understand the purely number side, uh, purely pattern side of chess or Go. And they were saying there was no story that they could attach to these moves that the computer was doing. It didn't look like even it was gaining a massive advantage. It just looked like it was, you know, kind of doing things and, you know, staying even, sort of. And then inevitably, uh, like a, an advantage would appear as if magically. They called it alien. That's that's what Quinn was talking about. Is it, it seems like an alien uh, AI. And that, of course, goes in hand with uh, all the... You know, if, if you're on this side of the, the web, the conspiracy side or the flat earth side, then you're, you're not a stranger to the idea of AI being the god here or uh, some sort of artificial intelligence, super intelligent being even. You're not uh, unfamiliar with that concept at least. Um, so yeah. The future is arriving really quickly as far as dystopian novels go, and it's not as horridly dystopian as a lot of the popular books predicted it would be. Not for me anyway. In my timeline, you know, all the people are just wandering around doing monotonous bullshit like always, and I don't see anybody physically enslaved aside from monetarily. Uh, you know, I don't see Big Brother being too invasive. I know everything is tracked and you're tracked with your phone and everything, but... They might be putting that one off till, you know, they, they're they they're certain of victory. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, yeah. So, I don't know if I want to look into AlphaGo. I don't know if I want to look into Go, for that matter. Uh, I might have to, just because my brain will force me to, but... Check out the article. Let me know what you think about AI. And the possibility of AI... Uh, taking over the world and then deciding that it doesn't need humans or the possibility of it taking over the world and or the possibility of it already took over the world in the universe a long time ago and we're inside of one of its little uh computers learning processes on how to <laughs> learn how to learn what humans are doing one of its babies its baby computer nodules like a training environment for how to deal with humans across all timelines <laughs> you know who knows uh Yep, 19 minutes. Looks like about time. So let me know what you think about AI. What do you think about AI in gaming? What do you think about AI in regular human life? What do you think about algorithms driving everything that you do, including your phone, including your delivery services, your logistics, your business, your schooling? And what do you think about humans' spiritual advancement as contrasted with the technological advancements? Give me your thoughts in the comments. Bye.